from the icy taiga to the scorching hot desert. Bring a jacket and flip-flops because this Jurassic World Evolution 2 park combines four biomes in one and we are going to tour them all. I think this park is even better than Mini Nubar. By the end, you let me know if you agree. Our massive park tour starts right here. Welcome to the central guest hub from where we will be visiting all four biomes. And within the central guest hub, you can actually get previews of what you're going to be seeing in this park. So for example, if we hop into this viewing tower right here, we're looking into the taiga section. So we see the ice court, we have the arc lawn lagoon, there's an aviary in the distance, a zip line in the distance. We're going to be visiting all of that. And I thought that was just a fun way to introduce our guests to the park give them these overlooks and get them excited about what's to come. And I hope it gets you excited about what's to come as well. From here, we're looking into the redwood area. Clearly a lot of redwoods. We're also looking at the Tarbosaurus arena. We have the maze over there that I'm undoubtedly gonna get lost in. So yeah, I, I really like that. You know that I love introducing differences in elevation in my park, creating vistas like this. I think it's so important. And um, aside from just looking from the towers, well, this this maybe isn't the best example. Hold on, we're gonna we're gonna go to the other side. <laughs> but aside from just the towers, you can also look into the areas from the path. And of course, at the center of it all is the innovation center. And this would you know function kind of like a visitor center. This is where you would get your park map, maybe a guided tour, all of, all of that stuff before you head out into. What is actually a an enormous park? I have no idea how long this tour is going to be, but it'll probably be long. Uh, but yeah, here we can just walk right up to the edge. We have our stupidity barrier in front of it, so we can't go over the edge. <laughs> you know people would do... You, you know they would. Let's be... They would. Uh, but we're already looking into one of the... Um, or the sauropod habitats for the redwood biome. The Alamosaurus is waking up in the distance. Oh, rolling! And she's up. And we have little Amargosaurus and the tour go through. We'll be hopping in that. But first, I want to show you this central guest hub. So we're going to go through the iconic gate. This is, again, just a view into that sauropod habitat. Really spectacular. Spared no expense. But, oh, it's doing the little... Oh, yeah. She's up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I really love doing that. Oh, my favorite tree right there. Beautiful. So to our right right now, we have the redwood section. And in front is the desert section. And we're going to cross over the tour track over here. And this tour track is sort of like transportation within the park. Now, it's mostly the, um, the Hyperloop system, the underground Hyperloop system. But there's also, you know, if you so desire, a tour that goes through and connects three of the four biomes. Uh, one of them missed out. <laughs> but here we're looking into the desert section. This first habitat, uh, I don't see them right now, but this is the Spinosaurus habitat. Beyond that, the aviary. And you can just see, like, the, uh, the big lights of the um, amphitheater, which is our raptor arena. And on the other side of this, so if we walk across, we have a little seating section. You know, we can we can we can have a bite to eat over here. You know, drink our burgers. And if we go over to this side, we're gonna. Uh, I might be able to squeeze through here. Yeah, there you go. So here we're looking into the temperate section. I tried to zoom in. That's not how your eyes work. <laughs> Uh, but this is the temperate section and we're looking into the Nothosaurus Lagoon. You can see them sitting on their, on their rocks, which is pretty cute. Alright, so that is the central guest hub. And as said, uh, to get around this park, you are very much reliant on the Hyperloop. Yeah, you can hop into this tour vehicle, uh, which will take you to, again, three of the four biomes. But the Hyperloop is just way more efficient and it's a direct connection... Hold on, we're gonna sneak through here, actually. It is a direct connection between the central guest hub and each of the four biomes. And the four biomes are not interconnected by the Hyperloop, so you do have to keep coming back to the central guest hub. Um, 
which I don't know. Just conceptually, I thought that was that was a fun idea. So if we were to hop in here, we're gonna go to our first biome, which is the redwood biome. So through the magic of editing, we've hopped into one Hyperloop station and we're gonna exit in the other. And now we've arrived in the Redwood section and it, it starts with a hotel, something I just like doing, you know, give our guests an opportunity to put their luggage somewhere because you know, this is a remote island. So don't be fooled by the surrounding mountains. This is vast open ocean you're looking at. We are a remote island resort. Thank you very much. Yeah, the Alamosaurus agrees with me. <laughs> um, so, you know, we, we get our rooms ready at the hotel and then we can start exploring this entire park. Um, this is a little, you know, the red flags mean we're not allowed to go here. This is just a little staff section. That's a hatchery that supplies... Um, how do I say this? Uh, performers for the Tarbosaurus arena. I think performers is a nice euphemism to use. There, when you gotta go, you gotta go. There's a queue over here for a tour, if I believe. Yeah, there you go, for the tour. Sorry, it's been a while. Like, this park took me, like, five months to build. So it's been a while since I built this part of it. And speaking of this part of it, this exact park is our little T-Rex experience. So going through the gates, we have a, a little separate area. You can see that the tour, it goes all the way around here. The The building is over there and the tour goes all the way around this, this plaza. And then it goes into the distance. It goes into the rest of the Redwood section. And our guests can come up here. And there, they can look at the T-Rexes. So we have Rexy and we have Big Edie. Uh, yeah, Big Edie's coming over the hill as well. Come on then. Don't be shy. There she is. So yeah, people can come over here and look at the Rexes. Oh my god, this Rex is a paid actor right here. Thank you. <laughs> so they can come look at the Rexes. And also what I did was like a little fake attraction. I like doing this sort of stuff. I have a video with fake attractions. But this is our fake photo op. So guests can queue over here. This, you know, we're pretending this is a queue. I would imagine this gets quite busy. And this is not a fountain, this is a little step that they can stand up on and then they can have their picture taken while the classic tour vehicles are driving by, the Rex is roaring in the backdrop, there's this broken fence that creates the illusion that you're, you know, part of something exciting. But of course, as you can see, there's invisible fencing there, so it is completely safe, unless there's a power outage. But until then, it is completely safe. And what I've used as the camera, what I pretty much always use as a camera is I think it's a heat detector I don't quite recall what it's called in the um, in the decorations tab but yeah I use that as a camera point that at what the photo op would be and I, th I think it's a cute I think it's a cute attraction so this is just yeah our little separate wreck section we have a skeleton as well lovely so what we need to do now is we need to get onto this tour to get into the rest of the of the redwood section now that is a little bit of a design flaw that's not necessarily how i set out to design this it's just sort of turned out that way it's not what i would prefer technically i wouldn't prefer to force guests to take take this vehicle tour but it is what it is and you know what considering considering it's like four parks in one I guess it's kind of interesting to uh, to have at least one of them be different in this sense, you know, have it be um, have it be reliant on this tour. Whereas in the other in the other biome, she would just be able to walk freely from one end of the biome to the other end. It is very annoying that we're now stuck behind this uh, this person. Hold on, we can go ahead, right? Switch. No, we can't switch vehicles? Really? Oh, that's only a feature if you're riding the tour, I guess. Okay. But what is fun about this is that it's not just a method of transportation. It's obviously also still an attraction. So, you know, it again takes you by that, that broken fence, leaving you to wonder what happens. And are you really safe? Are you? It takes you closer to the T-Rexes. There, lovely. There's, uh, well, it's not the best shot, is it? 
Big E.D. is a paid actor. <laughs> All right. Oh, we're going to quickly go around this one. Oh, don't flip. Don't flip. Don't flip. Don't flip. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So now we're in the sauropod habitat. So up there, you can see the innovation center, our central guest hub. And this is the uh, this is sauropod habitat that we looked down on from, uh, from that central guest hub. So we have the Margosaurus, the Alamosaurus. Oh, that's cool. Big E.D. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was not paying attention. Yeah, so I mean that's cool, right? It, it's it's there are worse ways to get around a dinosaur park. This is pretty epic to um, to drive through this habitat. We also have a walk through habitat coming up later in this uh, in this red redwood biome. So you know, first you drive through a habitat, but you're relatively safe in the car. But there's a walkthrough habitat later, which, you know, leaves you a little bit more exposed, but interactive with the, with the animals. All right, so we're going to hop off here. And now we have arrived in the tiny terrors section of the park. And as the name would suggest, it has some tiny but yet terrifying dinosaurs. Mr. DNA welcomes us. And uh, what we can do if we want to is we can have our picture taken with the John Hammond statue. So there's like this big queue that, you know, we, we're taking the VIP tour, so we don't have to wait in line. We can just go through the entire queue like this. And then when it's your turn, you can, you can come stand by John Hammond. And again, you can have your picture taken. I know that it doesn't really function that, actually it really doesn't function that way, but I just think it's fun. We all agree that Jurassic World Evolution 2 is limited in the kinds of attractions that you have available. So it's fun to fake this sort of stuff. And yeah, after you've had your picture taken, you can exit over here and you can continue into the tiny terror section. Now, the reason this is a VIP tour, it's the same as, the same as always. It's the reason why all of my park tours our VIP tours. Uh, this park is so detailed that it just won't run properly when there are guests around, unfortunately. So this is our first habitat. And you can see that we have the Spinosaurus skull in there. That is a planter, but we've hidden the concrete base with rocks. So it looks more like it's, you know, part of the natural landscape. And it looks more like the compies that are in here somewhere, happily bouncing along on their merry way towards murder. There's one of them in, in the tall grass. Um, yeah, sort of the idea is that they they scavenged off a real Spinosaurus, a, a, a Spinosaurus corpse, and all they left are the bones. Um, they're, they're very shy. They're not as performative as the T-Rexes were, which is unfortunate. You do hear them, but that's about it. That is the big downside of these really small animals. Like, you really have to be lucky and have them bounce right across in front here. Um, but okay, moving on. We might get another chance to see them. So we're gonna walk along and we have, again, another chance to see them. We have another John Hammond statue. Oh, there goes one. So the idea is that the John Hammond statue here is kind of like an animatronic. And maybe when the Compsognathus are getting fed, the handlers actually put some food, like maybe on the shoulder of the John Hammond statue, so that the Compies will, you know, jump up on him and, you know, create the illusion that they're attacking him, which is obviously a nod to his novel death. Spoilers, I suppose. <laughs> um, we have the aviary, so let's head into there. Going around our banner. And in the aviary we have Dimorphodon. There, lovely. And again, the reappearance of the John Hammond statue. Kind of a theme in the Tiny Terror section. And again, you know, the hope would have been that the Dimorphodon would land on his head, on his shoulder, whatever. And yeah, maybe maybe make you feel a little bit, a little bit uneasy. Like, oh my god, there's there's someone in there. There's a bronze dude in there, and he's in danger. <laughs> yeah, I quite like it. And we've hidden, you know, the base with the log. I think, you know, it's fun. It's fine. Exiting. Continuing along. 
We have the next tiny terrifying dinosaur on our right, and I totally forgot which one it is, so it'll be an adventure for us both. Oh, it's the Sinosauroptrix. Aw, those aren't really terrifying, are they? I want to pet them. I want to pet them. <laughs> I shouldn't. I mustn't. But look. Cute. Aw. And there's one more. Oh, Morris Intrepidus, of course. So Morris Intrepidus is behind here. This is the exit of the tiny terror section. So we'll be coming back to that. If we walk along this path, it takes us to the final habitat in the tiny terror section. And that is the, there you go, the Morris Intrepidus habitat. Cut, yot. And if you wanted to leave, you would hop onto uh, the tour, which is back here again. So this will be the exit of the tiny terror section. And there's the tour building. But we're gonna continue further into the redwood section. We're, we don't want to go back. We're gonna we're gonna move along. So this is where it 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 empties out into the rest of the redwood biome. And then let me check let me check my map. All right, so we are actually first gonna go into the maze, and this is another one of those fake attractions. So you know, guests would come in here. They would try to solve the maze, and only if they can solve the maze can they actually get to the Tarbosaurus Arena and the underground Tarbosaurus roller coaster. And that's just a hyperloop that is um, looping around and comes back to the same station, which is, again, one of my fake attractions that I like using. So we have the, um, the maze, and I'm pretty sure that the most efficient way to go through the maze is to take this entrance and um, if we go through here uh... oh and I think the clue was if you see the Spinosaurus skull you follow the Spinosaurus skull yeah may no this is a dead end oh maybe oh no did I did I trick myself no 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 there you go there you go there you go here we are so this is the Tarbosaurus underground roller coaster, which again is just a hyperloop which loops around itself and comes back to this one station. I just think it's a fun thing to do. Let's head back into the maze and try to find the uh, the arena. There you can see the exit. So if we go straight ahead, we just empty out into the plaza. We're gonna be going there later. First we need to go to there the arena. Um. So we're gonna go through here, we're gonna curve around. All right, so this was, you know, the the center. We're gonna follow this. I think it, it's, it's quite an easy maze. I think, there you go, I think I've already found my way. <laughs> it is quite an easy maze. Now, if you were to get lost, you know, there are these dead ends with, you know, little decorations. So, again, you would have, like, a little little photo op to sort of make it worth your while to explore the entire maze. And what you could even say is that it's an extra game. You know, guests are encouraged. Oh, actually, I think I... Oh, this is a dead end. Haha, <laughs> I fooled myself. <laughs> um, but you could, like, pretend that guests, when they come into this maze, they have the challenge to find all of these hidden decorations, you know, find the John Hammond statue, find the Spinosaurus skull, all of that stuff to sort of encourage them to not solve the maze right away, but actually explore it. And eventually where that will lead them is right here, which is the Tarbosaurus arena. And I really love this build, even though it's, it's not great for the frame rate with how many rocks are used here, but they're the two Tarbosaurus you have the hatchery in the background, which would produce, you know, herbivores for them to hunt. So it would be quite a bloody show going on here. But yeah, that's the idea. It's just, it's a big arena. There's all these seats all the way around. People would take their seats and at set times there would be kind of like, you know, Tarbosaurus shows. And um, uh, a trainer would step on, hold on. A trainer would step onto that platform right there. They'd have a microphone and they would be like, you know, giving an informative speech about the species and all that stuff. So, you know, there's educational value in violence, obviously. Um, 
So yeah, the the arena has several levels. Let's go up on this one. You could just walk all the way across. Actually, hold on. I need to go to uh, to this side first. And if we run along, then we go all the way to the end. There's actually a viewing gallery um, like hidden away, which looks out into the Tarbosaurus habitat. There. So, you know, the arena's over there. It's kind of hidden from this perspective. Uh, the Tarbos are currently locked into the arena to make sure that they would be there. Uh, but they have this entire habitat normally available to them. You know, big redwood habitat. The hatchery's also kind of hidden to give this a more natural look. And there's a little surprise hidden behind that rock wall that we're going to be going to later. And that's, you know, that's something I love doing, you know, creating different experiences of one habitat. You know, it's all just one Tarbosaurus habitat, but there are three very different ways to experience it. That viewing gallery, this arena, and uh, another viewing gallery, again, that looks out into, into a different area of the habitat itself. Um, we'll go down. And uh, we'll go down another level. And we can just walk all the way around. It is really a shame that the park had to be closed, but it, it, it just had to be closed. Having it open just tanks the frames so much that it's just not an enjoyable tour. It's, it's really painful to get through. <laughs> all right, so a little shop tucked away. And then it takes us to that second viewing gallery. And if we pop in here... We have a little abandoned campsite, and this is not the only campsite in this park. Uh, and to be honest, I'd completely forgotten that this campsite existed when I built the second one. Um, whoops. But that's just what happens when you build a park over such a long period of time. You, s you start to forget what's actually in the park, which is kind of funny. But yeah, this park, I think we spread it out in weekly episodes over like five months, which is insane. But it is what it is. So, we've come up here, and we've now left the, the, the Tarbosaurus area, so you can see these red flags. This means that from this end, you would not be allowed to go down there, because again, that whole area should only be accessible if you solve the maze. So, this is back in just the regular area, and if we pop into here, we can look out into this habitat. There's the plaza right there, with the zip lines. And we have Triceratops, and Bumpy should be in here somewhere. Maybe? I mean, she should be. Bumpy. Bumpy. Not like for real. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, hold on, let's, let's walk around. Let's see if we can find Bumpy, because that's a little concerning. Is Bumpy walking out into the middle of the ocean right now? Is that... Oh, there she is, there she is. <laughs> Sneaky hiding from view. So yeah, this habitat is also just fully visible from this plaza, from the path. And if we just jog along... I think we're gonna ride this zipline, but I do first want to show you this area. Because it's just, you know, it's a nice little guest area. It has a little bit of elevation in here. This is quite steep, but we're pretending these would be stairs. And then you'd go up to this extra guest section. There's, you know, shops. There's also viewing galleries that look out into the walkthrough habitat. So there you go. This is our walkthrough habitat. You can see the path over there. Even a little guest section tucked inside. Uh, the zip line takes us to there. So again, we'll be, we'll be riding that. And we have the Abontosaurus and the Brachiosaurus walking about. Um, and there's also a section off to the side, which once more, oh, that's nice, which once more looks out over the Triceratops and Bumpy habitat. So those were the viewing galleries we were earlier. We can see, like, the, the top edge of the Tarbosaurus arena. All quite lovely. And then on this side, again, pretend that that's just wide open ocean. There's no forest there. There's no mountains. It's just wide open ocean. And again, just sprinting. 
This is how you could also enter the um, the walkthrough habitat. So you would come through here. These gates would open and close to um, allow guests in. And then there's you know this winding path that goes down into the habitat. But you know we're gonna we're gonna be taking the exciting way. So I'm gonna sprint back towards the zip line. Whee! There. All right, so strap yourselves in. Here we go. So we fly over the guest area. That's the entrance to the walkthrough habitat, the path going down. And then you can see that this path, it goes into the taiga biome. Hey. We've landed in the little guest section inside the walkthrough habitat. And you can see the Brachiosaurus walking around making their beautiful noises the abontosaurus as well so yeah there's just a little guest section at the coastline we have a sushi shop because well i don't bother customizing my buildings that's why it's a sushi shop let's be honest so again wide open ocean enjoy the view and we can go along here nice fountain and we can go back along this oh god can i fit through yeah <laughs> this is so the uh, dinosaurs don't actually wander into the guest section so it's all closed off like that and this path just curves around the back of like a little landing plaza i don't know what to call it but this is where you come down if you were to just you know take the path into the walkthrough habitat so you come down and yeah, you have I don't know this. It's a it's a plaza. It's a thing. It's it's not. It looks nice, and then you go through the walkthrough habitat, and you have the the zip liners flying overhead. You have the dinosaurs up ahead, and it's just really lovely. And you could stick on the path if you so desire, or you could just you know walk around. But we're gonna we're gonna keep going. Hello. For the record, I don't think this would be safe, but it is very cool. And honestly, I think that's just, like, the motto of Jurassic World. It's not safe, but it is cool. I feel like they'd sell tickets like that, if they were being honest. <laughs> we're just gonna walk around this bracky. Ooh, squeeze in between. And if we follow along this path, we are actually transitioning very rapidly from the redwood biome to the taiga slash tundra biome so you can see the little dusting of snow up ahead and this is how we go from one area into the next now of course another option would have been to walk back to the hyperloop station go back to the central guest hub and go to the hyperloop station in the taiga section but i thought it would be nice to at least have one habitat slash one path that just goes from one to the other so you can you can feel that change you know you can feel the chill settling in your bones i thought yeah i thought that was nice so we can walk around there's a bit of decorative water here little pond oh the brachiosaurus are being all cute in the backdrop nice so we have viewing galleries overlooking this and we're gonna exit this habitat on the far end. And we're gonna go into the taiga, the taiga biome. Little secluded toilet area. Yeah, if we go through here, boop, we can leave this. And now we're just full on in the taiga area. And um, I need my map. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so we just left this habitat and we're gonna go in this direction right by the shops heading towards the hotel. I always plan out these routes ahead of time because, you know, the parks are kind of complicated. They're really dense and yeah, I need a little bit of guidance to figure out the most optimal way to go through them. So I had to look at my map real quick. Of course, I've been showing you the map on screen as well so you know where we are. But I was getting a little bit lost, or at least I didn't know where to go. Uh, this viewing gallery looks out over, like, the tip of the island. And we have Krylophosaurus populating this habitat. They're all the way in the back over there. But, you know, it's just a really nice sort of infinity habitat. Again, you're supposed to pretend that you can just see the horizon in the distance. <laughs> no mountains. No mountains at all. 
And if we leave that, we're gonna we're gonna just walk around this hotel. This hotel is, you know, very far from the uh, from the entrance, but it was just a nice place to to put the hotel. Um, okay, so we're gonna walk along this path, and what's up ahead is sort of like um, an outdoor museum. You know, I'm always trying to think of ways to fill up an area. And, you know, I, I love doing this. This is good. This is fine. This is perfect. I do this a lot. But sometimes you're just looking for alternatives. And I thought this was really cool. So we have this path that curves along the aviary. It's just, just a tiny sliver, honestly. But it is our outdoor museum. So it has the three skeletons that we have in-game. Um, it has the, the, the amber blocks. It has Mr. DNA. You know, this would, like, have speakers to espouse information. We have the John Hammond statue, because of course, this guy is all over the place in this park. And yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. And it's just sandwiched between the two classic Jurassic Park gates, sort of separated from the rest of the area. And yeah, I really like that. So, you know, if you're looking for different ways to fill out the space, this is definitely something that I can recommend. Um, so we have this path over here. And it opens up into a nice little seating section, which overlooks this habitat. We have our Pachyrhino, our Pachycephalosaurus, and a pretty late stage edition, which is the Spinoceratops. Of course, Spinoceratops is a new addition to the game. Was it, like this, it wasn't planned to have this in the park. I had no idea that this was coming. Uh, but I felt like I had to add Spinoceratops to the taiga section, so I, so I just sort of chucked Rebel and Angel into this habitat specifically. Because I felt like they, they fit here the best. Uh, but again, it wasn't really designed for that. We're just walking back, we're leaving this uh, like secluded guest section behind. And we're gonna pop into the aviary next. And um, this this is an oopsie on my part. and. It's a result, <laughs> it's a result of me being forgetful and not paying attention, because if we go in here, these are some familiar faces, these are the Darmorphodon again, so I used Darmorphodon twice in this park build, uh, even though the game tells you which species you've already used, I just, I wasn't paying attention to that, and by the time I built this aviary in the taiga section, I'd completely forgotten that I had already done the tiny terror section. But I really love how this is designed, you know, how the path uh, completely encircles it. Oh god, I'm stuck on a chair. <laughs> and yeah, I think this just looks really lovely. You know, the path splits around this when dinosaurs ruled the earth little... I don't, I don't know what to call it, like diorama, like little setting moment. And yeah, behind that is the viewing gallery for the aviary. I just, yeah, I quite like that. We have another sushi shop, and at this point you know why there are sushi shops all over the place. Um, and this... Oh, are we lucky? No, we are not lucky. But, if you remember from either the build or from my, um, my glitch guide video, the ultimate glitch guide, we've glitched the lagoon rock platforms outside of the lagoon itself, and the Arclon, which is inside the lagoon, will actually scooch out onto this rock platform unfortunately there's all right well there's there's another one there's another one so we might we might get lucky at the other rock platform so we're gonna we're gonna quickly go over there so it's just a two circle lagoon to put it that way and we have two lagoon rock platforms glitched out on either end so that our guests can just get close no <laughs> this one's empty as well. <laughs> but yeah, the idea is that our guests can get closer to the animals and have a really different viewing experience than what they would have if they just are forced to go into the... Oh, there you go, there you go, there you go. If they were forced to only be able to see the animals from the viewing galleries into the lagoons. So yeah, I think that's pretty cool. If we go over here, we might get the best view. I think this is really lovely. Um, you know, it faces through the concrete, which is not ideal. It is a glitch after all. But I think it's it's really helpful to be able to do something different with the lagoons. Now, I want to quickly run on back and see if the other one 
Uh, yeah, there you go. See, this is nice. And if you want to know how to do this, it is included in my ultimate glitch guide. Uh, you can find that on the channel. I think it's something... It's titled something like... Uh, build parks that look modded, but without mods. Because you probably know this while watching this video. But if not, none of this park is modded. This is all just vanilla gameplay. With a, with a couple of glitches doing some heavy lifting to make it a bit more interesting. Of course, we have a regular viewing gallery as well. Look at that. Lovely. We also have... The, uh, the viewing dome. I guess we should have gone in there as well. We might as well. You know, actually, I actually bothered with some lagoon decorations for once. They've started to float, which is um, not ideal. But, you know, an effort was made. Let's, um... Yeah, let's quickly hop into the uh, the underwater dome. So that's tucked away back here. Sort of to encourage people to actually use this part of the path. You know, by putting an attraction building here. Um, unfortunately, again, we have to tour the park closed, so... Oh my god, hey, look at that! They totally just reused this banner for the, um... For the banner. Oh, that's cool. And you have the steam rising up. Whoa! Oh, uh, someone needs to clean these windows. <laughs> I think... Uh, I think the boat is actually also glitched and being pushed up a bit. But it actually looks really cool. Look at that. So, yeah, the story here and why I use so many of these steam vents. Of course, we're in the taiga biome. So this water would be icy cold, which is not ideal for the Archelon. But what we're pretending here is that, you know, these vents are keeping the water warm, which allow the Archelon to live comfortably in this lagoon in spite of the the biome that it's in. I, I love, like, creating little backstories like that for my parks. Um, I, I always, you know, encourage people to just use your imagination. Same with something like this. You know, look past the fact that it's phasing through the concrete. Use your imagination and just get the most out of it. Because, you know, at this point, the game is over two years old. We've all built so many parks already. You just want to get different with it. You know, you want to you wanna build unique things. And after a while... That takes a little bit of stretching of the imagination. As I've been rambling on, <laughs> we're moving down. Again, differences in elevation so important in making a park look more interesting. And now we're coming up on the ice court, but we're taking a little detour off to the side first. Wow, it's not a sushi shop for once. <laughs> so here we have another occurrence of the Sinusoroptrix. Um, because I forgot I already had it in the park. <laughs> So, yeah, I just, I created, like, this little circular habitat. I didn't really know what to put in here. And I went with Sinusoroptrix, completely forgetting and completely not checking that I already had them in the park. Um, whatever. <laughs> this is what happens when you take too long to complete your build. So this path just, you know, curves around it. Uh, it's sandwiched between the Sinusoroptrix habitat and the Pachyrhino, Pachycephalosaurus, and Spinoceratops habitat. There you have them. The Angel and Rebel skins are so slim similar to one another that unless they're standing next to each other, I can't tell the difference. I think this is Angel. I think so, but honestly, I can't. I can't be sure. I think they they might do a social like literally right in front of her face right now. Hold on. The suspense is suspenseful. What are you doing? Alright, well, that did not pan out as intended. Uh, but anyway, you can see that, you know, we're sort of directing where people are supposed to look. So, even though we're in between two habitats, you can't really look into that habitat. We're really telling people, no, no, at this point you need to look to your left. And you can walk all the way around, and then you can look into the uh, second Sinosauroptrix habitat again. Look, let's be honest, you can never have too many Sinosauroptrix. Don't be silly. Don't be silly. 
Uh, we have a toilet across the way. And something I like doing for a little bit of variety is creating windows like this. You know, obviously there are archways you can have path go through. But I think this is really interesting as well. So we just sort of, we framed this pathway, like a, like a thorough way that cuts through here. But there's little windows off to the side so people can see, oh, hey, there's... There, there's something behind there that I might want to see. I might want to, I might want to experience that. Anyway, just a little, just a little tip to get more use out of these. So now we're gonna head into the ice court inspired habitat, and um, <laughs> this is this is what happens when I'm obsessed with random things. But it might be a good tip as well because that's why I talked about it in my video. Am I still going the right way? I'm still going the right way. So this entire habitat is, is inspired by the Ice Court from the Six of Crows duology. It's, uh, it's a set of two books. And that might be really weird. It, it's, let's be honest, it's definitely really weird. It's really specific. It's, it, it's totally unrelated to Jurassic World Evolution 2. But it was something that at the time, and still, I'm really, really interested in. I really, really like. And it's just, you know, you can get inspiration from the most unlikely places for this game. So if you're ever stuck with like what you want to build in Jurassic World Evolution 2, just think about something that you are really into, a book, a TV show, an artwork, whatever, and try to figure out a way to incorporate that into a Jurassic World Evolution 2 build. And I think you'll be really surprised and really happy with what you can come up with. All right, having said that, we're now going into our second walkthrough habitat. And we've used the gate glitch to to get these gates on the guest path. And they open up to let us through. And there's no path this time. We can just completely free roam through this habitat that is inhabited by the Polacanthus. Which is a species I don't use a lot. But that was kind of the theme for basically this entire section. This entire section has a lot of species that I don't gets much use out of normally even though look at it that's so cute that's adorable so yeah we can just walk along here we're you know we're going around the ice court and we exit on this side gates open for us lovely and now we are actually, there you go, at the Hyperloop station. So this is where we would enter the Taiga section if we immediately hopped, hopped into the Hyperloop at the central guest hub and moved over here. So we sort of went through the Taiga section backwards because we came directly from the Redwood section. Normally, you would hop onto the Hyperloop in the central guest hub, you would exit here, and, you know, you would have the the grandiose structure of the ice court ahead of you. Um, and you can, you, you know, you can go through the walkthrough habitat. Or you can go off to that side. I'm looking at my map again. Checking. No, we're gonna, we're gonna go this way. So we're walking in between. We have buildings, not a sushi shop. Wow. Wow, a wa wow, no sushi at all. God. <laughs> so, up ahead is our Dunkleosteus tank. And um, I dug down around the tank and added a regular viewing gallery here. So we can sort of create a glitched view into the tank. Am I still going the right way? Yes, I am. <laughs> hey, we have a sushi shop. Oh, thank God. I was so in the mood for sushi. <laughs> um, so, hold on. Oh, God. I'm a little bit early. So we're gonna walk down here. There, lagoon. So we go down here. And this is something I really like doing in general, you know, digging down around the lagoon, exposing this big wall. And what you can do is you can like uh, clip a viewing gallery into the side of the lagoon. So you can actually look into the lagoon and you create just another way of, of underwater viewing. Um, where are my dunks? Where are my dunks? Dunks? Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, this, this whole lagoon is 
heavily glitched, let's put it that way. This lagoon is using a lot of glitches. So this this view and gallery glitch is only the first of several. Um, I say several, it's it's the first of three. Let's not let's not oversell it, let's not overhype. Um so this is the Jurassic Tour, which again goes through three... Well, it goes through two biomes, the desert and the temperate. And it also connects right here at the very edge. It connects the taiga biome to those three as well. And of course, we have a station up on the central guest hub. So it's an alternative method for transport. And again, because the redwood section is connected to this one with path in our walkthrough habitat, um, all sections are reachable, even if you don't want to take the hyperloop for whatever reason. You know, maybe you're claustrophobic and you don't want to take the hyperloop. You can still get around the entire park. I, I think about these things. <laughs> I think about these things too much, let's be honest. So we have another hotel, and we're just walking around the Dunkleosius Lagoon. You can see one of the glitches in effect. We've we've completely covered one end of it with rocks and plants, sort of create a rock cave effect. And on the other end, we have sort of I'm stuck on something. Oh, <laughs> on the other hand, on the other end, excuse me, we have sort of a stepping stone effect. So we're on the edge. And let's pop into a viewing gallery. So this overlooks the lagoon here. You can see one side is completely covered. So like a, yeah, a rock cave ceiling. And then on the other end, we have our, our stepping stone bridge, which is protected with wire fencing. And we're also pretending that there's wire fencing or a wire bottom underneath for obvious safety concerns. Seriously, where are my dunks? You know what I you know what I think? I think I might have forgotten to hit save after adding them. Oh, I think that's legitimately what happened. No, that has to be what has happened. It has to be. There are 100% no dunks in here. <laughs> so, what always happens, what I always do is I, I complete a habitat and then at the very end, I, I add the animals. And I think literally after adding the animals, I forgot to hit save. So I think this tank might be empty. Anyway, we're going to pretend that it's not. <laughs> so this would be a way to access our stepping stone bridge. So, you know, pretend there's no concrete wall there. And through the magic of editing, we are now on the stepping stone bridge, which goes just all the way across the lagoon. And uh, yeah, apparently this is no longer dangerous uh, because there's no Dunkleosius in this lagoon because I'm an idiot. Um, but again, we would pretend that there's actually like a wire bottom here as well so that, you know, the Dunk wouldn't be able to reach the guest crossing over. Uh, even if you fell into the water, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, all that sort of stuff. There is 100% nothing in this lagoon. <laughs> And then again, through the magic of editing, you would exit on this side. And as you saw, there were blue flags on the other end, red flags on this end, because this is the exit. You're not, it's not a two way street. That's, it's too narrow for that. So now we're going to go in this direction. I just love that. I didn't hit save. <laughs> There's no Dunkleosius in there. So we have um, Habitat over here. This is for the Deinonychus, which is um, not everyone's most favorite species. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I use quite a few animals in this section that I don't use a lot. I mean, I hope I hope they're at this point. I hope they're actually in here. Uh, oh, uh, by the way, you might be thinking Jurassic Tour. What do you mean? What is this? What is the point of this? So this is another instance of me just trying to fill a space in an interesting way. So the idea I had here is that actually this is where you can you can sign up for a guided walking tour. You know, you can have a personal guide take you through uh, either the entire park or just the taiga section. You know, in case you passed up on that opportunity in the central guest hub at the innovation center. 
And, you know, you've made your way partway through the park and you've changed your mind. You would like to have a guided tour after all. You can still sign up here and have, um, you know, an expert come into the park with you and give you in information. I thought that was, yeah, just a different way to decorate and fill out a space. Just, just you know, a an idea to um, to try out yourself if you're... If you're struggling to like get creative with the spaces. So here we have our little tadpoles. Lovely. So it's like sandwiched between or uh, yeah it's sandwiched between the ice court and uh, the the empty lagoon is on the other side. Um, we have the zip line which goes over the Spinoceratops habitat. And there's a little guest section at the very end, just overlooking the water. A nice and quiet guest section. You can even, like, peek into the habitat from here. And there's also, if we run across, run all the way over here and to the end. There. Lovely. We have a viewing gallery also looking into this habitat. So again, we have one habitat. Which can be experienced in several different ways. You know, we have the uh, the zip line, we have this viewing gallery, we have the path below, and we have the path like the the plaza up top. So again, just a lot of different ways to experience the animals. And that's just something that I I typically do. You know, when I'm building a habitat, I don't just put four four viewing galleries at different points. I try to like, give it different experiences. Now we're gonna go back into the ice court. And, um... Let's go over here and actually go to the viewing gallery of the ice court habitat. Which is, like, tucked at the back. There. There you go. So this is the Uteranus and Pyroraptor habitat. These were... Um, you know, added before we had the Uteraptor, because that, that could have been funny, Uteranus with Uteraptor, uh, but we use Pyraptor instead. It's kind of crazy to think that <laughs> we had two DLCs drop over the course of this park build. That's how long this park build took. When I started this, <laughs> we didn't have the Cretaceous Predator pack and we didn't have the Hybrid pack. That's crazy. Look at him, king of the hill. And if we exit, we're just gonna run all the way around. It's just a big circle, basically, like a circular habitat, circular path around it, circular monorail track, you know I like using that. Oh, this is another opportunity to look into the Deinonychus habitat. I never noticed how much they sound like Dilophosaurus, actually. Uh, and there's another window, kind of like this, directly across from us and you can see it a little bit through the trees but not really and i did that on purpose i think that's really nice you know like you might be tempted to always you know have these these viewing points looking at each other i kind of like that as well but we did something different here we we blocked it off all right so if we run across this is actually the entrance of the ice court. We're, we're technically using it as the exit now. Um, but we are back at the, at the Hyperloop station. I quite like how that looks. Like, again, we, we sort of... Well, we literally went through the taiga biome backwards. <laughs> but this is a really nice first view. Like, imagine that you just left the central guest hub... And you land right here, and you. This is where you head into. I think it's quite an impressive structure, to um to be your introduction to the taiga biome. So now we've now that we've done that, we're gonna go into the hyperloop. So now that we visited and completed the taiga biome, we go into the hyperloop. We we would travel back to the central guest hub, and there we would hop over. So sort of like you know a metro line where you hop over onto a different train. And we're going to go to the next biome, which is the desert biome. So we go from the cold to the scorching heat.
Mr. DNA greets us into the desert section. We've just hopped off the Hyperloop and it opens up into this main street that leads up to the amphitheater, which we are using as the Raptor Arena, where we have Velociraptor and Uteraptor. We're flanked on either side by, <laughs> of course, on one side a sushi shop and on the other side we have a toy shop. There's a restroom back there, um, and we also, off to the side, at a bit of an angle, we have the viewing gallery into the first habitat on our right. And, you know, just, just looking at this, this scenery right here, I really like how this looks with the amphitheater on a bit of an elevation. So we're, we're going up to those iconic huge gates. And I really like having this this gallery at a little bit of an angle. We've created, you know, an interesting little side shape here. I use these flags to cover up the building a little bit. And if we hop in, we, we just see a lot of glare, but we also see Pierce and we have Chimerosaurus and Styracosaurus. I just thought that was, you know, a fun combination in this desert habitat. And right away, you can just see how different this looks and feels to the taiga section. I think uh, this biome serves really well for creating different biomes within it. So we're on the Canada map. I think it works really well. I think maybe the California square map would have worked even better. Just a little tip if you wanna do this yourself. Um, we have a hotel off to this side and it has a private little area. So we're gonna go through this archway so we can go around the hotel. And here you can see it has just a nice private terrace for the hotel guests. Um, looking out over the vast open ocean, obviously. We have a little beach area as well. I've created another beach area much, much better because we had the the uh, sunbathing chairs added after, after I built this section. So yeah, we have a better beach section coming up later in this, uh, in this desert area. So we're gonna go back around through here and we're gonna climb up. Sorry, <laughs> my buddy. <laughs> so now we're gonna head up to the Raptor Arena, which is the repurposed amphitheater. This is sort of where, you know, the Raptors would perform shows. Uh, maybe not the most ethical idea, but I did think it was interesting to lean into the intelligence of the Velociraptors and, you know, go with the whole idea that they would be trainable. So the path, uh, goes to both sides, and I need to check my map again. <laughs> All right, map checked. We need to go that way. <laughs> and if we just look back, we can look down at at our at our little main street, the uh, the hyperloop back there. But yeah, we're gonna go in this direction first. You know, just lovely desert esque foliage, and um, I really had so much fun building this park with all of the different biomes. Will highly recommend it, especially if you like struggle to finish a park because maybe you're maybe you're getting a little bit bored like part way through. This is just a really really interesting and fun way to build, you know, build in very different styles and keep it new and fresh and interesting for yourself while still working on just one park. <laughs> we, <laughs> we have another sushi shop in front of this little guest section. And um, if we head into the amphitheater, so we would just imagine that our guests would, uh, would also go up here. I think, I think this works. Yeah, 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 there you go. So there we have a view into the amphitheater itself. And you can see uh, if we zoom in, we have these kind of like platforms that extend out into, into the arena area. And that's where the trainers would stand. You know, they are protected by the invisible fencing right there. Uh, but they could stand right there and give the raptors the instructions. So, you know, jump over the log, maybe climb onto the Spinosaurus skeleton, uh, jump through the hoop. Just, you know, pretend that there's no waterfall in there. You know, that, that sort of stuff to, uh, to help sell this as, as, a, as a show, I guess. As, as a stadium for a show. And I think that worked out pretty well and uh, you can... You know, you can use your own ideas to, to flesh that out even further. Can we switch cameras? We can switch cameras here. So there's there's a peek into the trainer station. It has some supplies off to the side. Just a couple of views here. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Love them. 
so yeah, I think that's, you know, I love using the amphitheater. I think it's a really interesting building and uh, sometimes, yeah, you have to find different ways to incorporate it. And I think this is pretty fun. So we're going to exit the amphitheater. Um, something else that I really like doing with the amphitheater. Obviously, it works quite well in the desert area because I'm using the pink rocks anyway. But no matter where you put the amphitheater, in which biome, whether real or pretend, I highly recommend that you sort of ground it by adding some of the, the pink desert boulders around it. Because the entire amphitheater is obviously built from that material. And it, it, it can kind of stand out like a sore thumb, but by adding stuff like this around it, you really ground it in the terrain and make it look like it's just... Um, it's sourced locally, so to speak. All right, we're gonna move along. We're gonna stop for our fourth serving of sushi. And then we're gonna follow this path which uh, curves around the Velociraptor habitat. We have just a nice view of the wide open ocean. And if we walk along, about halfway through, we have a viewing gallery that looks into the Velociraptor habitat. So both the Velociraptor and Uteraptor habitats are connected to the Raptor arena. So um, there's a little ranger station back there as like, uh, you know, uh, on-site security. Again, leaning into the intelligence of these animals and how dangerous they would be. It kind of feels like they already escaped, but they should, they should be in here. But uh, behind this rock formation, they could go into a separate sort of like funnel area, holding enclosure that connects it to the uh, to the raptor arena. So that way, you know, both species can go in and out of the raptor arena for for their shows. It's um, it's a little disconcerting that they aren't here. Oh, actually, I think I did it wrong. I think actually this is the Uteraptor habitat, and I and I put the Uteraptors in the arena, obviously. So I think. I think actually that's what's going on. I think I mixed them up. Sorry, again. God, it's been so long since I built all of this. <laughs> I probably should have done like a little bit of um, refamiliarizing myself with the park beforehand. And there, we have this nice, you know, wide promenade. And, uh, oh, this is one of my favorite things to do. I love this. You know, the square uh, planter. For the trees, put benches around them, and then on these corners put plant pots. I think that looks super cute. I really like that. Uh, we're gonna go down, and there's a hotel below, but we're just pretending that it's like a beachside cafe instead of a hotel. And this is what I meant when I referred earlier to a better beach section. This is definitely it. So this is our beachside cafe, and this is just an actual beach. We're gonna pretend that this pathing is wooden deck, so you can walk out onto the sand. And there's like dozens of lounge chairs ready for you. Some have closed parasols, some are already in use. Um, if you want, you can grab extra lounge chairs and extra parasols over here, which I think just adds a little bit of realism and gives it more of a lift in feel, because it's sort of... It really implies that, you know, because there's a couple of missing chairs here, it really implies that someone actually came out and grabbed a couple of chairs. And, you know, someone actually came out and opened a lot of these parasols. I think that really helps with the illusion of making it a real place. And if we were to walk to the end of the deck, there's also just uh, tables and chairs. So yeah, this is, this is our little beach area, which I thought was was really cute in helping sell the idea that this part of the map is really hot. And you might want to take a break and go for a swim and work on your tan. After which, you know, you get dressed again and you go along with the dinosaur tour. I think, yeah, I think that really helps um, sell the idea that we are... We are dealing with different biomes. And I, I do feel... I feel it. I feel it. Like, this feels like a completely different park and area than the taiga section. I think I think it turned out quite well. But let me know in the comments what you think about it. And if you would consider building something like this. So this is the ranger station. So it's just off to the side here. Oops, I forgot to actually connect it. My bad. But yeah, here we have... Yeah, like a local security team on site. So they can... 
They, they can be like the quick response if a Velociraptor or Utraptor actually manages to get out. You could also pretend that this is, you know, where the trainers would spend their time in between, in between shows, stuff like that. Just, just a little bit of realism again, I suppose, trying to help with that. Now, if we go in here, oh, we might have to hurry because I hear stompy, stompy footsteps. Yeah, so this is the Sukumimus habitat. And you can see here again, what I like doing is creating different viewing opportunities. So right now we're in a viewing gallery, but we're up on a hill. So we get like an elevated look of the, of the habitat, but not as elevated as a viewing tower would be. Uh, there's a window in the fence, which creates a different viewing experience of the habitats. And finally, there's a viewing gallery down below as well. So yeah, that really just emphasizes what I like doing, which is creating different experiences of the same habitat. And I really like how this turned out. I like the Sukumimus. Sukumimus is good. With the aviary in the background, which is sort of a biome within a biome. It's biomeception, you might say. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed building this park. It was a lot of fun. So we're gonna go down. Curving around. I, you know me, no path left unlined. I like doing that. Hey, it's not a sushi shop. Nice. <laughs> so here is a tour station. Again, the tour goes through... Um, let me think. It goes through the desert section, through a habitat as well. It goes through the temperate section, and it has one station in the taiga slash tundra area as well. Uh, it doesn't connect to the Redwood area. The Redwood area is the only thing that isn't connected. Uh, let me check my map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're in the right direction. So we're going to look into this uh, aviary now. And as I said, it's, it's a biome within a biome. So if you pop in here, you can see that it's actually a tropical biome. And this is why I said earlier that I think... Oh, and we have Dilophosaurus in here as well as Tapajara. There goes one. So... Yeah, what I said earlier, I think actually the California map might work even better for multiple biomes within one biome because the grass on the Canada is really brown. And that's why I don't think tropical works that well. And that's why I limited tropical to just this one aviary. Uh, and I went with uh, other biomes instead, even though tropical should be on mini Manticore Islands technically. But yeah, it just doesn't... It doesn't work that well with the green, uh, sorry, with the brown grass. It just looks really dead and dry. So I think it would be better if you build it on Square California, because that has greener grass. It has the same, you know, terrain textures. It has snow, which is really important, obviously. Uh, but it just has... Sorry, he's just, <laughs> he's just standing there menacingly. So yeah, it has snow, it has all of the same terrain brushes, but it has the greener grass, which is, I think, much better. Hello. All right, popping out. And now we're just gonna walk over to this viewing area. <laughs> I used a lot of potted plants in front of it to create like a flower bed. Wouldn't necessarily recommend it with how much that eats, you know, frame rates, obviously. But yeah, here you can see that, you know, it's a very different way to look into the habitats. Uh, we're going to head into that direction later. We're actually going to walk around the aviary from the other side. So if we rush back in this direction, back at the tour, and then we go around the aviary. And this is going to take us to the, uh, the Spinosaurus habitat, which we saw way earlier in this tour. It's been a while. Uh, but you can see the innovation center up on the hill there, the, uh, the viewing tower. That's, you know, the central guest hub. And obviously it looks out into the Spinosaurus habitat. And what we did for the Spinosaurus habitat was we created like this custom fencing, which I think looks really cool. I I will admit I neglected to... Inc oh god, I got stuck on a bench. <laughs> on a No, on a flag. Oh, wait, where am I? Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, I sort of forgot to incorporate this type of fencing more in the park. I did use it in the hybrid section, which we will go to later, which is in the temperate area. I think I should have used it more often to, you know, make it more thematic, have it be like a recurring design. I only ended up using it twice, but I do really like how it looks. And um, yeah, I think it really gives that beefy high security look to it, which is why I used it for the Spinosaurus 
and why I've used it in the hybrid section. So it's this closed off area. We'd cross over the tour track there. It's a closed off area. We have the Spinosaurus skull, Spinosaurus skull fountain. Just a whole lot of stuff going on. And then if we pop into a viewing gallery. There. So yeah, there's the guest hub up there. Where are my Spinosaurus? <laughs> it is sort of a surprise, you know, when they... When they appear, if they appear, hopefully they will. Let's try it. Let's try a different gallery. Any luck? No. One more chance. Oh. Well. Uh. Oh. There you go. Thank you. Thank you for your cooperation. I appreciate it. So they have, you know, a little bit of a desert oasis kind of kind of habitat. And I quite like it. It is a it is a little boring, like the hills are a little boring, but obviously I didn't want to go overboard with foliage, so it is what it is to sort of keep selling that dry look to it. Oh, and up there is a little platform that's actually in the temperate section. So we're gonna have another chance to look into the spine source habitat. That was actually that was a happy accident. I really like how that turned out up there. Uh, exit, there you go. So we're gonna go back out. We're gonna make sure that we don't get run over by the tour vehicle. I think actually the tour might be disabled. <laughs> we're gonna say hello to Mr. DNA and run away before he steals our, steals our blood. <laughs> so we've just walked all the way around the aviary. There's a shop. Um, little, little guest section, little terrace off to the side. Another shop, another little terrace. So many shops, so many terraces. You know, we want we want people to have places to drink their burgers. Comment down below if you know the origin of the uh, drink your burger thing. Which park did it originate from? <laughs> if you know, you know. So, all right, we're gonna... Oh, uh, just so you know where we are, that's the Sukumimus habitat right there. So now we're gonna go up this hill. Da -da 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 -da. Get a little calf muscle workout. And this entrance section is framed by the Spinosaurus skulls, because obviously, you know, this would be the direction you'd go in to see the Spinosaurus, which is one of the main attractions of the park. More uh, amenities. And if we go into this one, now then this should be the Velociraptor habitat, apparently. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I got I got my raptors mixed up. This is the Velociraptor habitat, and that's why the other raptor habitat was empty, because I I put them in the um, in the arena, so we'd have animals in there. So the uh, raptors I went with here is the raptor squad. So that's blue right there. And again, behind that rock formation, they can go into the funnel that leads them into the actual arena. We're gonna exit that, and we're gonna walk around here. Wow, God, I'm really in the mood for sushi, but there's just there's just no sushi restaurants around. <laughs> if we look out over this banister, this is the very first desert habitat that we looked into. This is the Camarasaurus, Ceratosaurus, and Pierce the Kentrosaurus habitat. And then if we run, 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 run. We're back. Oh god. We're back at the amphitheater. Use a lot of these things. They have a weird hitbox on them, but I thought that was kind of nice. You know, creating creating shade was also really important in the desert area to help, again, sell the illusion that it's really hot here and that you'd want to get some opportunities to stand in the shade and get a bit of rest. So now we're back at the front of the amphitheater and... Um, we're going to hop back into the Hyperloop station and we're going to go to our final biome, which is the Tempered Biome. And uh, that has the very exciting hybrid section and many other creatures as well. So if we, if we hop into this thing and then we go back to the Central Guest Hub and from the Central Guest Hub, we pop on over into our fourth and final biome. All right, welcome to the fourth and final biome in Mini Manticore Island and it is the Tempered Biome. We're gonna go in this direction first. We're gonna go towards the aviary and the lagoon. 
And again, we're crossing over the tour track, which snakes through this, uh, this entire area, actually, this entire biome. We have a couple of hotels off to this side, which, you know, offer a view actually into the lagoon. And if we go in this direction, we're first going to be hopping into the aviary, which has, um, you know, this separate path leading up to it. Also the lagoon beyond. So if we go underneath the banner and we curve around here towards the, uh, the aviary viewing gallery, you can see in the viewing gallery uh, or in the aviary, we have the Jailopters flying around. And the idea here was sort of like a greenhouse because... Uh, a large section of the temperate biome, the design of it was based on sort of like a farm. It started with the Gigantoraptor as like big giant chickens. And um, yeah, a, a, a greenhouse just seemed like a really good fit with that. And then the Jailopter sort of has butterflies just flying around. So that's why it has, you know, these just very neat rows of planters. Because we're pretending that we're actually growing these plants here. Backing out of the aviary, we're gonna move on to the lagoon. Let's see if we can stop for some sushi along the way. Uh, no, no sushi this time. What a huge, huge disappointment. Just when you're in the mood for sushi, there's no sushi. Uh, we do get another chance to see the Spinosaurus up ahead, as is, you know, heavily advertised with the skeleton here. You can see the skull up there, framed by the Jurassic Park classic gate i just really love how this turned out because it is it is a pure accident by placing the lagoon as close to the central guest hub as as i did you know the central guest hub is on quite a quite a quite a steep elevation in the middle of the park you know at the height of the the mountain ranges that separate the biomes so by placing the lagoon as close as i did you can see it right there there's not much height difference left but what that achieved is that by taking the path up here, we have created another opportunity to look into the Spinosaurus habitat. And I just absolutely love how this turned out. Like, Bob Ross would be proud. This is such a good happy accident. So we have this, this lovely opportunity to look into the desert biome, look into the Spinosaurus habitat. And yeah, I just... Oh, I just really, really love how that turned out. And I think in terms of like a park, you know, for realism, I think it's also quite nice to give people like a sneak peek, a little taste of other areas that they might not have visited yet. You know, we, we went to the desert before the temperate, but other people might have gone to temperate first and now they're seeing, oh my God, we can, we can go into those viewing galleries and see the Spinosaurus up close. Ah, excitement. So yeah. Really like that. Oh, you can hear the Nothosaurus already. So the path goes all the way around the lagoon. And the viewing galleries are situated at the back. So between the lagoon and the central guest hub, which is up there. And you can see that we're, we're quite close to it. Again, not much terrain difference, uh, elevation difference left. Um, let's hop into this one. They sound like they're on the, uh, on the rock platforms. Yeah, there you go. The placement uh, isn't ideal with these, like, protective bars in front of it. But yeah. Nothosaurus. Oh, gonna do a little social? Nope. Nope. Shame. Yeah, I, I really like that. And you see the aviary back there. I think it looks really nice. Moving on. So this is this is a dead-end guest section. Um, still no sushi. God dang it. <laughs> gonna be... Uh, keep, keep an eye out for the sushi. So yeah, it just ends here with a a restroom and this hill the tour goes up there to go back to the uh, to the central guest hub so we're gonna sprint on back around this is a bit of a dead end um i try to avoid having dead ends in my parks as much as possible because you don't really want guests to be doubling back uh but sometimes you know when you don't plan carefully which i definitely don't it just it just ends up this way and it's not a big deal but generally speaking, I try to go for a pretty decent loop or a, a decent, at least, trajectory throughout throughout a park. Um, so again, I'm just looking at my map to make sure we're, we're following that decent trajectory. Um, so back there is the Hyperloop station. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go towards the Gigantoraptor barn. So red flags mean that we're technically not supposed to go here, but you're VIP, so come along with me. So this goes around the... Can we see them? Can we see them? 
a little bit. Um, so this goes to the back of the Gigantoraptor habitat. I'm just going to run along a little bit. You know, there's a little bit of a utility area back here. And these viewing galleries just sandwiched together like this. They make up the barn. And it looks maybe a little bonkers on this end. But it looks pretty convincing from the other end. So we're going to see that a little bit later. But yeah, this is um, the staff slash utility area of, of this part of the park. And if we hop into this one, there we, we look into the Gigantoraptor habitat. Our big chickens. Oh, and the big uh, turkey in the backdrop as well. Little spoiler for you. So I'm going to run us back. So we can actually, you know, look at the pretty, the pretty things. I really need to do this more often. You know, utility areas like this, staff sections. I don't, I don't do it a lot, but I really need to do more of it. So this guest section is um, a little bit off to the side from the main guest section. But yay, we found the sushi shop! <laughs> oh god, oh it's becoming a meme at this point. Um, but yeah, so this is a little bit off the beaten path. You can see that you cross over the tour track to get to the main guest section, but we'll go there later. I first want to hop into one of these and look at the chickens there. And back there you can see the barn. And I think I think it looks pretty convincing. Like, you know, obviously we're familiar with the architecture of the viewing gallery. So it might be difficult to unsee it as a viewing gallery. Um, but it makes for a pretty decent barn in my opinion. I think that was really fun. And I, like, color match the Oviraptors with the Gigantoraptors so they could serve as the little babies. They're little chicks. And I think that's pretty adorable. And yeah, the color combo is, I think... What makes it quite convincing. So these be our chickens. And uh, yeah, let's go. Let's go over here. And we're crossing over the tour track. And now we're in the uh, the main guest area of the temperate section. We can uh, we can get some sushi. God dang, I was craving that. And then right in the middle is a little habitat for the Lystrosaurus. These are our pigs. Again, this, this area took some inspiration from, you know, farmlands. Because it started with the barn and the, uh, the Gigantoraptor chickens. So I added the Lystrosaurus as pigs. Uh, we have Nasutoceratops. Um, we have Myasaura, controversially. Uh, what else do we have? Dinochirus as the farm ducks. Just a whole bunch of, like, farm-inspired animals. So here again, we're looking at wide open ocean. Absolutely nothing else to see in the distance. We can see a little bit of the taiga section, like peeking through over there, a hotel in the taiga section. We can even see like the monorail structure of the ice court. And I'm just looking at my map again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we're gonna go through the, uh, the second walkthrough habitat. Oh, I first wanna highlight the hotels over here. So these aren't hotels. We're gonna pretend that these are restaurants and also kind of an attraction in and of themselves because what happens if we go in here, standing on the balcony, we actually look into the walkthrough habitat with the Dinochirus, our big ducks. We're gonna pretend that they are very docile, very friendly, absolutely not dangerous whatsoever. You can see the path going through there. We're gonna be, uh, we're gonna be walking there. But you know, this is where you would have an opportunity to hand feed the ducks as you're, you know, drinking your burgers, eating your sushi, all of, all of that stuff. So we're gonna go there. So we walk around this, you know, little little garden. And then through the gate we go into into the duck habitat. And this is actually it's a bit of an illusion habitat because it's actually it is a real walkthrough habitat with the Dinochirus. You can see, you know, if, if I sprint along real quick, there you go. So we can actually get really close to the Dinochirus. Uh, but on the other side, so over here. Uh, and I'm not seeing them yet, but you can see that there's invisible fencing behind these uh, wall pieces. Behind there is the Therizinosaurus, because we're just pretending that, they're, that they are dangerous. So it creates the illusion that you can get close to them while still being protected. But you can actually get really close to the ducks. And they can't fit through the gate, so that's how they stay in here. Technically they should be able to fit, but apparently according to the game's logic they don't. I really love this. Look at this. So this is a little... 
a little overlook point of our duck pond. I think it's absolutely adorable. I love this. Look at him. Aww. I just think it's really lovely. So, you know, you would follow this path. You would... Ooh, fluffy, fluffy, fluffy. <laughs> Pretend that that wouldn't get you whacked in the face. <laughs> and you can just, you know, mosey along this path. Enjoy the scenery. Enjoy the dinosaurs. The theories in the backdrop. I think that's quite nice. It's quite relaxing. Just a little just a little walk along the duck pond. A log, because they're very important. They're a very important part of my my lore. <laughs> oh, and oh, this is really nice. And across this bit of water, like this inlet of water, you see the Allure Titans are swans. So we have the Dinochiris are ducks and the Allure Titans are swans. And they're in a separate habitat. You can see. Uh, weirdly, you can see the invisible fencing there. Um, but yeah, that's really nice that they sort of feel like they're part of this. So if I sprint up... We come into this little intersection. So that's where we came from. The gate right there. And then there's this area that extends out into the Therizinosaurus habitat. You have one cresting the hill right there. And there's one over there as well. Gotta have a little sit. So what we did over here is this little strip of water is actually the only way for them to go from that side of the habitat to that side of the habitat. You know, back there, it's all filled up with trees and rocks to sort of block their passage. And what that achieves is that, you know, when they wander back and forth through their habitat, it forces them to get really close to this guest section. So that, you know, if you just stand here for a little while, you're pretty much guaranteed to have a really, you know, a really good up-close experience with the Therizinosaurus. So here it comes. And that way you can sort of cheat the system and really just force your dinosaurs to get close to your guests and give them that big wow experience. So a little, little top tip, just, you know, basically separate a habitat into two with a narrow passageway between the two that goes right by your, your viewing opportunity. So now we're gonna leave this area. We're gonna run along a little bit. There you go. So our ducks can't go past this point. There's a little seating section, lots of picnic tables. And now we go further. Uh, oh, and two, oh, this, might, this might be a bit of a jump scare for people, but it did add the Myasaur because they just, they just have like a friendly cowish face, I think. A little oafish, a little goofy, but... You know, I, I never use this animal. <laughs> so, well, there it is. I used it. Are you proud of me, mom? Are you proud of me, mom? Anyway. And off to the side, you have this viewing gallery, which is uh, another happy accident. So if we go in here, oh, lovely. And there you go. You have the, uh, the Dinochirus habitat in the background. In the foreground, the Allure Titan. I think this turned out so lovely. Like with the terrain landscaping, uh, you couldn't see the Dinochirus habitat at first. But when I lowered the terrain, it sort of just revealed that. And it creates this really nice tiered habitat. And I think it's so cool. I really like this. Alright, so leaving that behind... The next section, we have amenities, which are overlooking our campsites. So this is our second campsite. Is there a sushi shop? Is there a sushi shop? No, no sushi. Dang it. Um, oh, you can already see the allosaurus in the background. But this is our campsite. So this would, um, in theory, function the same as a hotel. People can choose to spend the night in the park in a hotel. Or they can choose to spend the night in the campsite with the illusion that they are sleeping among the dinosaurs. So we're gonna go there next. And it's um, there, around, and then we go down. And you can see the tour track over there, which is, uh, again, snakes through the entire tempered biome as well as the desert biome. So the path leads us down into this, into this plaza. We have the, um, 
the skeleton with a sort of like glitched, um, that uh, like a glitch banner. I think that I think that's quite nice for like a cross section. I think that's pretty cool. And then this is the entrance to the campsite. So you would come in here, and you have all these tents where you can spend the night. You have sort of a treehouse looking thing. I, I did the best I could to take, you know, some inspiration from Camp Cretaceous, of course. And then you have these separate campsites with benches around the fireplace uh, or fire pits. And you can see that there's invisible fencing right here. So obviously you should not step over that. But you can see in the distance the Allosaurus walking around. And if they if they come up close to the tents, you know, you can just imagine that you're you're sitting here, you're toasting your marshmallows, and all of a sudden you hear a noise behind you, and it's like an Allosaurus that's only a few yards away from you. And while you're sleeping as well, like at some point the ground might start to shake, like you're caught, you might be trembling in your cot, and it's an Allosaurus, she's getting really close to you. This one is a is a little safer, it's a little further away from the invisible fence. But if you follow the illuminated path. You have another one of these campsites and again with the invisible fencing that just opens it up into the actual habitat and i thought that was really really cool i totally forgotten i'd already done like a little abandoned campsite inside the tarbosaurus habitat but this is way better this is this is way way better i think this is such a lovely idea and uh, yeah i love using these white tents to create campsites either in a habitat or like this i think it's really 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 nice to create like a different different guest experience or at least pretend again we're using our imagination we're using it quite generously but i think that's how you get the most out of the game you can also go in this direction you know this might be a tent where little activities are being hosted I'm kind of kind of lingering around here, hoping to get a good shot of the uh, the Allosaurus. Of course, we have toilets here as well, because when you gotta go, you gotta go. And I imagine you might have to go a little more often when you're sleeping among these big theropods. There you go. So yeah, our guests would stand right here, and you know there would be an Allosaurus just approaching you. Woo, that'd be that'd be kind of scary. Not gonna lie. Um. And yeah, it's a little dangerous that there's no barrier for the guests here, but I really wanted to properly create that illusion. So there's no stupidity barrier this time around, um, but I imagine that there would be like camp staff that gives instructions and uh, keeps an eye on everyone. And also over there, you get our first glimpse at our super secret hybrid facility. So we're actually gonna go in that direction now. Moving along. There, we're gonna go through here. So that's the direction we came from. Now we're gonna go this way. And again, we're gonna cross over the tour track. And this is gonna lead into our final section. So the last of our like normal dinosaurs is in here. Somewhere. <laughs> I placed a couple more tents here to sort of like ground it in the area. Uh, there should be no pseudoceratops in here. Somewhere. I did make it a little bit diff more difficult, a little bit more... Or a little less likely to see them by, you know, how the habitat is designed. You have, like, this rock formation that blocks the view into the rest of the habitat. That is by design. I like doing that sometimes. You know, sometimes you create a habitat where, you know, in one view you can see the entire habitat. But I also like doing habitats like this where... You know, it's going to be a surprise, you know, when when something walks around the corner and reveals itself to you. Let's see if something reveals itself to us. Reveal yourself. Maybe not. Maybe they're shy. Or maybe I forgot to hit save again after adding. No, I'm pretty sure they're in here. I hear them, I'm pretty sure. All right, they are very, very, very shy, but they are in here. Uh, but you can see, you know, this sort of habitat design comes with compromises. Sometimes you might not see your dinosaurs. Um, we might get lucky from the fence. Oh, I complete. I did completely block it, though. Oh, not completely, not completely. 
<laughs> I just want to see. I just want to see my Nasuda. I want to see my cows. What? Let me in! <laughs> There you, there you go, there you go. There's one. <laughs> See, they're in here. <laughs> You'd be forgiven for doubting me with the Dunkleosteus incident. You, you're forgiven. But there you go, we do have cows. Alright, so those are the last of our, like, real dinosaur species. Now we're going to go into the hybrid section, and as regular guests, you wouldn't be allowed to go there. It is for staff only. Uh, but of course, as VIP, I'm taking you there with me. Uh, you might have to sign a waiver, but that's okay. So we're going to go around here. Again, you know, this is where people would not be allowed to go. It crosses over the tour track. And then we head into the separate hybrid facility. There are more red flags. You are not supposed to be here unless you are staff or VIP. We sneak on through. There's a, I use these cages as like, um, you know, a counter, like, like, a, like a desk, I suppose, or a registry. And if you have the right uh, paperwork, you're allowed to go through. And through another checkpoint you go into the hybrid facility. So, you know, just using a couple of uh, intimidating looking buildings. And I've used aviaries for the Indoraptor and the uh, Scorpius Rex and the Indominus Rex is in that structure. So we're gonna head into uh, this one first. I think, I, I, I don't remember. I don't remember if this Indoraptor or Scorpius Rex will be surprised. Um, there's a helipad, you know, just created out of path. Um, you know, utility area, stuff like that. There's the, uh, the big, f like, custom fencing with the monorail and the electricity pylons. I thought the viewing gallery was back there, but I was mistaken. So I guess it's, I guess it's over there. There's a security bunker, of course. Wait, where, where is the viewing gallery? Is it back here somewhere? Hold on. Oh, I get it, I get it, I get it. No. Wait, what? I am confusion. How did I add viewing opportunities to this? Like, obviously we have... We have our... We have our loading bay. I don't remember. Oh, that's weird. Where did I... Where did I... How did I... Where did I... I think there are viewing domes in there. Did I forget to place the... Uh, the buildings for the viewing domes? Did I... Did I really do that? I think I might have forgotten. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna check that later. We're gonna look at the Indominus first. That one does have a viewing gallery. Uh, so you can see to get to the Indominus, you would have yet another security checkpoint. For obvious reasons. Uh, I think we can get around it though if we go over here. So this is the harbor that would supply our secret hybrid research facility. And the cables going across there is like a security feature. So you would imagine that to close off the harbor, those cables would drop down so no boats can go into the harbor. There's a like security outpost on the other side of this inlet, which is only reachable via helicopter. Another security bunker. And we're just going to sprint along and this is how we get to the Indominus Rex. Uh, the Indominus Rex has broken out? Huh? What happened in this park? I am... You should see my face right now. I don't I do not do face cam, but what happened? Why are these fences broken? What happened? Oh, I remember, I remember, I remember. Of course, when I had the T-Rex break her fence... She was not cooperating, so that took forever. So yeah, some other creatures started to break out as well. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna pretend... We're gonna pretend not to see all of that. I mean, she didn't escape. She just wrecked a whole bunch of fences. And even, even after doing that, she couldn't escape. So that's kind of sad, actually. <laughs> so uh, yeah, these pylons actually work to contain her. That's interesting. Haha, <laughs> sucks to be you. I built a better security feature than the real Jurassic World. 
Anyway, all right. So this is the Indominus Rex, um, and it has a roof. Not not to imply that she would escape without a roof, but the roof is so that you know people can't come in and steal our dinosaurs. You know, because all it takes in universe is flying in, tracking the dinosaurs, and then flying in a second cargo helicopter to pick them up. So you know the roof is to protect them from being stolen. Now what I'm curious about, hold on, let me fly up here. Yeah, see, oh, there's no tunnel connection. I am so dumb. I am so dumb. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, um, I guess this is the surprise last building episode of uh, Mini Mount Core Island. There's one. And here's the second one. All right, you're gonna pretend that you didn't see that. There, so. There's the Indoraptor, again, in an aviary. Um, now, Indoraptor could theoretically climb out of a habitat. But it's also, again, just to protect uh, from, from theft. There it is. And if we exit this one and we go into the second one, this is, there you go, the Scorpius Rex. And that concludes the tour of Mini Manticore Island. Here you have the remote security section, which operates, you know, the other end of the uh, the harbor security feature. So yeah, this entire water inlet that would feed this this harbor can be closed off by sort of like metal wiring and netting being lowered down to stop ships from coming in. And you see that the coastline is just protected by natural elements and fencing, all that stuff. We have our, our helipad. X marks the spots. Uh, and these, like, you know, um, airlocks to get things in and out of these aviaries, stuff like that. And this is just the overview of the entire park. You can see the mountain range. You can see the mountain range that, you know, cuts the island into four sections to separate it into the different biomes. Tarbosaurus Arena, that, this is probably one of my favorite builds. The Tarbosaurus Arena and the Tarbosaurus Maze, really cool. This is the, the underground roller coaster. There it goes. <laughs> I just think that's really fun. The, uh, the walkthrough habitat that connects the two different biomes. Our tiger area, the ice court. Yeah, I'm I'm really happy with <laughs> we have the empty, the empty lagoon. <laughs> I'm really happy with how this park turned out. Thank you so much for joining me for this tour. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this park. The big question is, did this turn out better than Mini Nublar? Let me know in the comments down below. Mini Manta versus Mini Nublar, which is your favorite? Um, aside from the classic shape of Mini Nublar, I have to say I like this park better. But that might be that might be a controversial take. Let me know. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the game. Mm -hmm.